Stokesy, we stand here in the East Bank at the end of what's been an incredible season. It's obviously a lot quieter than it normally is. But I mean, if we can rewind, maybe go all the way back to when you first came to this stadium. I mean, I was lucky enough to be here, be there that day and see you for the first time. And you were really excited, weren't you? You were, you were asking me which bit is the main bit, which obviously is where we stood today. And, and you, you just looked like a bit of a... You, you were really excited for what was going to come. Yeah, I... Uh... As soon as I got here, I was buzzing. Um, obviously, it was a lot different from from where I came from at Sudbury. And uh, as soon as I turned up at the stadium, I I loved it straight away. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I remember standing by the by the tunnel mm. with you, asking to see change rooms, yep. asking you all these little things. And yeah, it was just I was just buzzing, really looking forward to it. And yeah, the season the season didn't really disappoint on a personal yeah. level, really. I mean. Obviously, the, the players came in as, as they did. Mate, some of them might have been a bit after, but when you first went to training and you first saw these players, obviously Stuart O'Keefe, he's played Premier League games. You've got Hadji who goes to Tanzania all the time. You've got Kwame Thomas, who is England youth caps and, and, and all that. So And Laurent, obviously, as well, who, who was from Brighton and, and played international youth appearances as well. Was, was that a bit daunting at first? Yeah, I feel it was my first experience with that, with that sort of thing, with obviously high-caliber players. Um, but yeah, you have to sort of back yourself in that yeah. environment. Um, so yeah, it was it was a bit weird at first. I remember Loren coming coming to Bob's for the first time, and uh, and yeah, he had his he had his salmon salmon and his bagel, and I was like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, little did I know he'd score yeah that many goals. And you guys hit it off instantly, didn't you? Because you both lived together, as you've just said. You, you know, you, you were you had that connection. I think for me personally, it was maybe the Farnborough friendly. You guys really were switching it on together in before, obviously you got sent <laughs> off. But you guys were really switching it on in your link up play. And yeah. do you think do you think that maybe helped this season living living with him? Yeah, definitely living together has helped. Um, Farnborough was the first game we sort of played together, weren't yeah. it? Um, and unfortunately, the, the incident <laughs> happened. But um, but yeah, it was our first taste of playing together, and obviously, living together helped massively. And I've yeah, I've enjoyed playing with him this season. Was that another thing that maybe daunted you as well? Because you you were for, for well, I say forced, but you were you were put in such close quarters with Laurent, who had this completely different footballing journey through younger ages to you. Obviously, you were with Ipswich until you were sixteen, weren't you? But then the two years previous, Laurent was obviously going on loan around the Football League and up to Scotland. He was playing for Switzerland under 21s and getting an international record and, and things like this. And obviously you were in your humble roots at Sudbury. Was, <laughs> was that maybe a little bit daunting at first? Yeah, I suppose it was quite weird to be fair, but, but Laurent, Laurent's obviously just a normal guy yeah, at the yeah. end of the day. So yeah, we, to be fair, we instantly, instantly hit it off and it was... Yeah, we was just chatting about football. I remember sitting at the dining room table just talking about football for hours and he was he was telling me about all of his all of his loans and stuff. Um and I was telling him about Sudbury. He was like, <laughs> Where is Sudbury bro? <laughs> um so so yeah, it was like, it was it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess then we looked to well, let's talk about a bit more about pre season. Obviously we played Wickham, Sutton, football league clubs. I mean, as, again, speaking personally here, I think that was the first time I maybe took notice of, of that young lad, Josh Stokes, how you were, you know, Wickham had a few players in there. I, I think off the top of my head, it was Richard Keogh, who's had international appearances for Ireland. He's played in the Premier League and, and you were just knocking him off the ball and, and things like that. And, you know, was that maybe a sign for you that, OK, this season might be OK? Yeah, it was quite weird playing against him, actually, because he, he was at Ipswich the season yeah. before, obviously, my, my home club. But... Um, but yeah, it was it was obviously our was that our first game at the EBV as well. Yes, it Wickham. was. Yeah, yeah, it was. I wanted to to kind of prove a point and show that that I'm sort of here here to make a make a part in this in this season. Um, and yeah, that was that was the first time I feel that we really gelled as a team as well. This game, uh, which brought us together. Wow, and you um, certainly did hit the ground running in the league as well. <laughs> I mean, Oxford City. You know, when you look at the fact that they finished bottom of the league this year, maybe we got one of the easier draws. No disrespect to Oxford, of course, but one of the easiest first games there. But we didn't know what to expect at all, did we? I, I guess even you guys and the, and the staff didn't know what to expect. But you scored in, here, right in front of this stand. Introduce yeah. yourself perfectly to the to the shots fans. W what was that feeling like? Uh, it was pretty crazy, to be honest with you. 
um, it was probably one of the best feelings I've I've had to be honest. Obviously, playing in front of this many fans for the for the first time, um, the emotion I had was just so cool. Um, and yeah, I loved it. It was it was something that I'll probably never forget to be honest with you. Um, when this the stadium, to be honest, goes crazy, it's it's, it's something special. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely miss it for sure. Was that a factor in you scoring a lot more at home than you did away in the early <laughs> part of the season? Because you did love a goal at the at the EBB, didn't you? Yeah, I, I just love scoring at home. I didn't <laughs> want to score away. Nah, um, I actually, I obviously wish I could have scored away more. But yeah, scoring at home in front of our own fans is is something so special. Um, and yeah, I loved it. Obviously, I wanted to score more away though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, that was when maybe I guess people outside of our own club started to take a bit of notice. Was was that ever, I don't know, is, it, people look at it two different ways. Maybe it spurs a player on, maybe it, it gets in their head a bit. But what, what was that like when, you know, you started maybe seeing a bit more talk about you on social media and nationwide? Yeah, uh, I'll probably give you a cliche answer and say <laughs> that I just wanted to keep my head down. But obviously you see things, um, but you have just got to knuckle down and work, work even harder than you have before. Um, because as long as you're performing on the pitch, everything else comes around it. Um, and yeah, that's the main thing, to yeah. be honest. Oh, fair enough. And, and another thing that really got people's eyes opened was the FA Cup run. That was just magical, wasn't it? I mean, the, the magic of the cup is a massive cliche, but I think we did feel it this year, didn't we? Oh, 100%. Um, even from Lewis at home, we yeah. wanted to make sure that we, we got the job done against them. Obviously, a few, few leagues below us. Um, and yeah, we we as a group we wanted to go as far as we poss possibly could, and I feel like we we fulfilled that. It was just an amazing journey. Um, Swindon away, mm. Stockport here, Stockport away. It was just obviously West Brom as well. Um, it was just yeah, it was it was so special to have the that Stockport moment here was was so cool, and I've. I don't think I've ever heard the place so loud. Yeah, I mean, when we scored that equaliser, what was it? Uh, five thousand to five and a half thousand fans here. We had the big tifo display here, didn't we? Yeah. You were saying Aldershot, which is a fantastic picture. And then again, you personally scoring twice against the team that was at that point running away with League Two, and obviously have now gone on to be the League Two champions. I mean, again, was that a bit of a wow moment for yourself? But that was wow. This is the level I can play at. Yeah, it was. It was just a great occasion for, for everyone at the club, to be honest. Like, it was the whole day, I remember it was so cool. Before we even came out to warm up, like, the stadium was, was packed. Yep. Um, and yeah, for us players, that was, that was brilliant to come out to. Um, but yeah, playing, playing against Stockport in the second round of the FA mm. Cup, for me, it was something that I wouldn't have even thought about this time last year. So yeah, it's pretty. And we've, crazy. we've got to talk about Swindon. I know it was just such an incredible and crazy day. Uh, did you, you might have all been going there that, that day thinking we, we can cause an upset here, but <laughs> surely no one thought we were going to score seven, right? No, we, we all believed that we could win. Yeah. That is serious. We, we thought we could win and we believed that we could win. Um, but to score seven goals against a team uh, league higher than you is just, it's just, you couldn't even think of that happening at all what was it like when that seventh goal went in when Jack Byron made that header what you I, I you watch it back and a lot of you and you look at the pictures as well a lot of you guys just look in disbelief was, oh, was... it was just hands on heads yeah to be honest. we were like what is happening there <laughs> it was it was honestly crazy when we scored one we were like wow yes yeah. just, just keep keep it tight at the back for yeah, the next yeah. 10 and then we went and scored another two um it was just it was just crazy. We were all talking amongst each other when it got to like three or four, like, what is happening yeah. here? I mean, it you was... scored an eighth as well, didn't you? Which, yeah, when you look back at it, was... Well, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was, yeah, that day was so cool. And we'll all definitely remember that for a, yeah. a long, long time. But then, obviously, we got drawn against West Brom. An amazing <laughs> day, wasn't it? But it was a real bittersweet moment for you, maybe. One of those real growing experiences that, that players will have in their career. I mean, can we talk about that Woking second yellow card which you know a bit of a controversial one to say the least yeah uh, did you dive no <laughs> <laughs> i didn't dive um <clears throat> but it was i think it was 
probably in hindsight a good thing that happened to me a, a learning curve yeah definitely in my career um something that i'll look back on in a few years and think that taught me a lot so yeah it was definitely tough going to west brom um obviously supporting the lads as best as i could um but yeah it was a bit of bit of a difficult difficult time to go in the stands and watch but the fans the fans helped me through it when yeah. i when i went up and they they all came and spoke to me, so yeah, it was really nice to be honest. Well, yeah, if, uh, I, some people might not know, but you did go in the away end, didn't you? And you were in there with all the fans. So yeah. That, was that a bit of a, a strange experience, I guess, watching all your teammates playing out there? Yeah, it was quite weird to be fair, um, seeing everyone play obviously from the, from the stands. But it was a, it was it was quite cool standing with all the fans and stuff and yeah. speaking to them. Um, so yeah, it was a. a uh, Sad day for me personally, but a very enjoyable experience. Yeah, say. of course. And then I guess later that month, we, you obviously made your move to Bristol City, which is where your future lies. I mean, when did you first know that there was clubs coming in for you? You don't obviously have to give the complete details <laughs> of all your transfer activity, but obviously there must have been a few whispers maybe that, that there was some big clubs coming in for you this, this January. What, what was that feeling like? To be fair, um, I, don't, I don't really hear too much of it because yeah. my, my agent looks after me well so I don't um, I don't get informed until something's really properly happening um, so I heard about Bristol literally a few days before it and obviously as soon as I heard about that I couldn't I couldn't turn that down um, but I knew when I came back I wanted to finish the season as strong as possible I was yeah. shot and obviously we couldn't quite get over the, over the playoff mark but it was it was just I just wanted to try as much as I could to, to help us get over the line. But obviously, we still had an amazing season. Mm. Um, just unfortunately, fell just short. I guess for you, you weren't properly or maybe aware of the, the last few years of Aldershot, but that might have become apparent when speaking to the gaffer and, and, and other people over time. But to, to have finished in eighth place this season, I think a lot of Aldershot fans are going to be over the moon with it. I mean, obviously, there is that disappointment at the end, but you know, we, we did amazing this season, didn't we? Yeah, the fans have been amazing to be honest because they've they've ex accepted that we might have some crazy games, yeah. good or bad, and uh, and they've been they've come along with us for the journey the the whole time, um, and yeah, it's just been it's just been brilliant to be honest with you. It's been they've they've they've, they've let us know um, about obviously previous seasons yeah. and. And this season for them, I hope they've enjoyed it as much as we have, to be honest. I mean, you've had a chant for you for you this season as well. What's it like hearing the, the, the EBB Stadium, like, sing your name? That must be yeah. amazing. The first time I heard it, I was like, are they singing my name? <laughs> Can't quite hear it. Yeah. I was like, are they singing Stokes? But, yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, and, yeah, obviously to have a chant is, is nice. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's so good playing here and I'll, I'll definitely miss it for sure. I'll give you one quick fire one now. You've got to think on the spot. Best moment of the season. This can be personal or as a team, anything. Oh, you can't put me on the spot like that, mate. It's got to be Swindon away. Yeah, it yeah. has to be Swindon away. That was just unbelievable. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, for you personally, it was, it was a great season. And as I said before, for the team, it was a great season. I mean, you can yeah. take that forward for you in your career now, can't you? Yeah, 100%. I just want to thank that. Obviously, all the players, because I couldn't have done it without them and the management for giving me the opportunity, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, thankful to all of those. And hopefully the club can continue pushing on in a, in a good direction. Well, Stokesy, it's, it's been an honour to watch you play here, mate. And, and I wish you all the yeah. best for the future. Thank you very much, mate.